What's up guys, Bob Oscar here at Think Computers and I'm gonna be showing you the basic web interface here for the WD MyCloud EX2. And uh, it's actually really cool and it's very easy to use here. So when you log in to the NAS here through your browser, as you can see, we have this little main page here and this kind of shows you all what's going on. So you can see our capacity here and what's being taken up. I have really nothing on this. Uh, so, you know, but it kind of shows you, you know, if you have a lot of movies on there or photos or whatever it may be, you can see what's going to be taking up what in this graph. Over here, we have information on your device. So you can see where, where it's running healthy and the uh, firmware, and this is the latest firmware, um, but it will tell you your firmware. And if you click on these arrows, you can run tests and you can go ahead and update the firmware. We have a live view of network activity. Again, nothing really going on, so not a lot of things here, but you can actually click on this little tab and you can see you know, your CPU, you can see your CPU activity here and you know, kind of what's going on. You can see your memory. You can see your network. Of course, again, not a whole lot going on. And you can see your processes. And you see all your processes that are running. So maybe something weird is running. It's taking up a lot of memory or whatever it may be. You can go ahead and see what's running and uh, you know, kind of fix it if there is an issue. So that's pretty cool. You can see all that stuff in real time. Cloud devices. This is devices that have access to this. Uh, to your NAS if, uh, you know, from the cloud, um, which we don't have any set up, but you go here and you can easily go ahead and set this up and it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions how to go ahead and do that. Our users here, we have one user, which is admin right now. Uh, that's me, of course. And you go here and you can go ahead and add a user onto the device and apps. There are apps for this, which I will show you in a second, but this just shows you the apps you have installed and if they're enabled or, dis or disabled. And these are the ones that have come in pre-installed on the device, um, which I will show you again in a little bit. So that is kind of the uh, main things that are going on. And then we have our menu bar up here and then we have our top bar. So we'll go over the top bar first. Uh, this is your USB and we don't have any USB devices plugged in, but if you do have them plugged in, this will give you um, information on them and it should give you uh, what you're able to do with the USB devices. This is your little event log or alerts. So here's some things that happened. Um, our network went down, we turned it off, uh, actually unplugged it, so power loss, uh, things like that. So again, if something happens, you'll be able to see it here in the log and you can view the entire log if you want. Here, um, we just have like some help and stuff, uh, getting started wizard help, supports and about. Uh, these of course are all links to the WD website for help and uh, you know getting started and all of that. And then up here, um, it just, we have modes, we can reboot, we can hibernate, and we can log out if we want. Now, on our second menu bar, this is kind of where you're going to set everything up. So, uh, we are at home, which is this screen, as you can see, but we can go over to users here, and you can set up your users, and you can set up groups. And what I really like about this NAS is, as you go through your different settings, there's like help uh, things right here that will give you information about what you're about to change. So maybe if you're not sure about a setting, you can go ahead and click on one of these and learn what it's about. So you can set up groups and you can set up users here. And again, I am the only user currently. We can see our shares here and these are the shares. Um, these are the ones that are set up by default. So we have our, like our time machine backup, smartware, public and admin. Of course, you can go ahead and add a share for whatever you may want. Um, you might may want to just add a, a new folder for a certain type of backup you're doing or something like that. So you can easily do that. And again, we have that help here as well. Cloud access, um, again, you can configure your cloud access. I don't have it set up yet, but you can go ahead and configure it all from this panel. And you can see um, you know, that we're able to, if we select our username, we can see that where I'll, we have port forwarding set up so we can access this device from the cloud and even more information here. Um, and it will, uh, divide, it will set up the devices too. So you can get specific codes for devices so that they have access to this, um, which is kind of cool. So I do like that as well. Under backups here, you can set different types of backups. You can set USB backup, remote backup here, internal backups, cloud backups and camera backups. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with this when it comes to backing up your uh, system. That's what a lot of this, a lot of people are gonna use this for because it's not necessarily a 
pro grade NAS, but it's more like a prosumer NAS. So you might be doing a lot of you know backups for your small business or things like that. So there's a lot of different ways you can go ahead and back things up. Under storage, this gives you all of your information about your storage. So our RAID profile, we can see our RAID is healthy. Um, and you can set auto rebuild to on or off and you can see our raid volumes here and you can change the raid mode remember this supports raid 0 raid 1 or jbod we have it set to raid 1 because we want to have redundancy so we have that set up there you can see our disk status here you can see both drives their capacity their temperature and uh, you know they're running in good health as you can see here you can set up iSCSI uh, if you want uh, you can set all this stuff up and you just you know hit over here to turn them on and volume virtualization you can go ahead and turn that on as well if we click over we have our apps which I talked about so you can see the settings for each of the individual apps um, that we have installed here so that's pretty cool that you have all you know all your settings here for the apps but you can actually if you click on here you can go ahead and install apps and um, these are all the ones available through WD. I don't know if there's third party. There's this install an app manually, um, but the app has to be compatible with the MyCloud OS. So I'm not sure if there's third party repositories or anything like that, um, but you have some cool stuff in here. So you have things like Dropbox. So you can sync your drop Dropbox to this. Um, you have things like WordPress. So in Joomla and PHP BB and PHP My Admin. Um, so if you are a developer and maybe you're developing a WordPress site for somebody and obviously you don't want to host it online or, or something you know where everybody can access it, you can develop it on this in a web interface uh, that you're hosting yourself and you can go ahead and do that. There's also things like the Plex Media Server. So you can store all your media on this and use Plex Media Server to go ahead and serve it out to different devices. So there's a lot of cool things that you can install and of course as these devices get more popular they'll be more uh, types of apps that you can go ahead and install very easy to install them you just hit you select it and you hit install very very easy to do so we'll move on from there and then here's our settings and this is kind of where you set everything up um, so our device profile we have our device name and description you set your language and clock and all of this stuff now cloud at cloud access and this is very important so if you have cloud service turned on um, what that allows you to do is access files that are on the device. That's it. That's all it will allow you to do is access files and stream files from the device. Now, if you want to have this dashboard that you see here and actually change things on the device, you have to go ahead and enable it. It's turned off by default, which I think is a good thing. Um, but if you want to be able to access this dashboard from the cloud, then um, or online basically you need to turn this on um, so make sure that you turn this on if you want to access this dashboard from anywhere in the world you have energy saver settings um, you can change all that Mac backups which is turned on by default uh, you can turn that off I'm not a Mac user so I should go ahead and turn that off and services you can uh, you know clear your recycle bin out of things you've deleted under network this is all of your network settings here and um, it lets us know uh, that we do have internet access and our, our IP addresses and things like that and your network service modes and you can go ahead and change all this stuff uh, if you want you can turn SSH on dynamic DNS things like that um, network UPS you can turn that on Windows services um, you can turn this on or off and turn the local master browser on or off remote server you can go ahead and turn that on turn that on or off as well as well as you can set up port forwarding if you want and under media uh, you can set up DNLA media server so you can access the media files that are on here and you can set up iTunes as well so you can set up iTunes streaming through this um, and then that's also turned on by default under utilities you can run system diagnostics so disk test system test you can view your system logs you can turn extending extended logging on or off and uh, the flash system LEDs you can turn those on or off as well you can set everything to the factory default or back to default um, you can save your configuration which is kind of cool so if you have your configuration set and maybe something happens maybe something gets messed up you can actually import your configuration um, and of course save it too so you have that backed up so you don't have to go back and change everything if you want 
Um, on your maintenance, you can see how long we've had this thing turned on, which is one day, 20 hours and 54 minutes. You can set it to hibernate and you can actually reboot it if you want. Um, you can run scan disk, you can format your disks, um, and uh, you can actually create ISOs and mount ISOs uh, using this device too. Notifications, um, you can set alerts through email and SMS if you want. Um, so if something's going on with the NAS, you'll get an alert. So if you have important things being backed up or something fails, you wanna get that alert, you have that. And you have your firmware update. Now, this will auto update its firmware, which is nice. So you don't have to go ahead and change it. Um, this is really, really great because a lot of network devices won't do this. Um, so auto update is turned on by default and you can obviously check for updates here and you can do a manual update. So that is basically it. I know I went through this pretty quickly. Um, you know, this is like a 10 minute video, but uh, this is the pretty cool uh, little interface you have here for the MyCloud EX2 Ultra. It's very easy to use, especially for a first time user. It has everything that you would want in this interface. It gives you uh, the ability to, you know, set backups, you can change your RAID modes, you can do anything that you want to do with this NAS, you can do in this interface. It isn't laggy, it it saves its settings. Sometimes we have issues where something doesn't get saved. A lot of the settings don't require a restart either, which is nice. So you don't have to go ahead and wait for the whole thing to restart. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's a great uh, you know user interface and it works really well and has all the options that you would want. So if you have any questions about the MyCloud OS, which I guess this is being called, it, um, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Till next time, catch you guys later. Thank you.